Lisa Rubel from Love to Color My World and I'm here today to show you how to transform the basic trick-or-treat bag from your plastic Target bag into a cute pumpkin that can be reused and washed year after year. And all you need to do it are two t-shirts. I use black and orange to do a jack-o-lantern. These are the Gildan brand ones that you can get at craft stores. And a piece of wash-away stabilizer. I have the kind that stick on. And I will show you how to make this in just a couple easy steps. So by starting with a t-shirt, uh, half of the bag is already made and we've got the shape ready to go. What you're gonna do is put the, lay the orange t-shirt down flat and we're going to mark the cutting lines. I like to use a water soluble marking pen because then it's easy for it to come off. And the first thing we're gonna do is to draw or cut a line just inside the armpit here where the sleeve seams are. Draw that line and cut it. And feel free to just cut. You don't actually have to draw the line if you're feeling good about that. So I'm gonna cut off the sleeve and then take a ruler and measure about two inches in from your first cut. And that's where we're going to mark the line. And this will create one of the bag handles. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and cut that sleeve off just inside the seam and then measure two inches and draw the line down to make our second handle. Now to make the point where those match, we're gonna measure two inches down from the bottom of the ribbed collar. So you wanna make sure that your ruler is fairly straight. Draw a line across, that will be the top edge of our bag. And you may need to join up your lines in the corner, which you can do freehand or with a ruler. And then I'm gonna take a scissors and just cut on those lines that we just drew. Now, because we're using t-shirt fabric for this, it gets that nice curled edge when it gets washed, so we don't have to worry about finishing seams. You don't have to worry about imperfect cuts. None of that will matter because it, the edges of the t-shirt will just curl in and will cover up all of those edges. So don't worry about perfection here. So here is our orange part of the bag, our outside of the bag. And to do the black t-shirt in the same way, you don't have to start from scratch. You lay your black t-shirt down, set your orange t-shirt on top, and try to match up with the shoulder seams. It doesn't have to be perfect, again, because of those curling edges. And then just take your scissors and cut around so that you're just about lined up with your existing orange lines. And if there's a pucker in the fabric or a wrinkle, don't worry about it. It will all come out as a wash at the end. So I'll cut my sleeves off and then turn this towards me and create the handles at the top. All right. So here we go, we've got the outer bag handles, the inner bag handles, and now it's time to add the jack-o-lantern. So I drew my jack-o-lantern face on an eight and a half inch square of washable uh, stabilizer, and that's because your t-shirt is pretty stretchy, and so by drawing on this it will help to hold the t-shirt in place as you cut and stitch around your shapes. Now I just freehanded this, and you can see I didn't like my first line for the triangle, so I fixed it. Uh, I've also got a template on my website if you want to use that, but feel free to freehand do whatever kind of jack-o-lantern face you want, but we will be stitching around the outside edges of these, so don't get carried away and do some sort of barracuda mouth with a hundred teeth or eyeballs with eyelashes. You wanna go for more of a basic design. And once you have your design drawn, then we're going to turn the t-shirt right side out, and lay it flat. And at this point, back and front don't really mean anything because we've cut out the whole neck part. And uh, remove your 
stabilizer from the backing, which sometimes is the hardest part of the process. And adhere it to your orange t-shirt. You want to have it centered between the left and right sides and then have an inch or two at the top and a wider uh, space at the bottom because we will be boxing out the corners of the bag and press it down so it is secure. And then at this point, you can take your scissors and cut your, just like you'll be carving a pumpkin, cut out your eyeballs, your nose, your mouth. Make sure that, put your hand in the middle to make sure that you don't go through both layers of fabric. You only want to go through this front of the bag. So sometimes I like to double it over to get started with a snip and then cut out each of those shapes. And again, if imperfection is your friend here, don't worry about it. If you've got some little scraggly edges, they won't matter when your bag is finished. But get all of those shapes cut out and then we'll work on assembling the bag. Hello! All right, I've got my jack-o'-lantern face cut out. And the next thing we're going to do is to box the bottom of the bag. So you want to keep it turned right side out. I had only flipped it so I could put it on quickly. And I'm going to trim off that bottom edge of the t-shirt with the hem. Right below the hemline. Get that out of the way. And then we're going to cut one and a half inch squares out of both bottom edges so that we can box the corners. So I'm gonna line up the one and a half inch lines in the corner and do the same on the other side. Make sure your t-shirt is laying flat so that you know you are truly in the corner of the bag. And then we're gonna sew along the straight edge bottom of the t-shirt and then after that we will box each of the corners. All right I've got my seam sewn and you'll notice that I am using black thread. That's because uh, you can probably use orange or black and they'll show through on one side or the other but because most of the t-shirt will curl to the outside edge you won't be able to see the seam on the outside. What will show on the seam is the lining. So that's why I chose black so that it blends in a little bit. Uh, so when you go to box your corner, you want to grab the two edges and you're going to line up the imaginary side seam of your t-shirt with the bottom seam that you just sewed and put a pin or two in to hold it. And then we'll be stitching along this edge and that will create the nice flat bottom for the bag. So do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna spread this out to the sides, line up that imaginary side seam with the bottom seam, and pin. Now sewing through t-shirts can be kind of stretchy, so you may need to uh, help it along a little more than you would with quilting cotton, but perfectly uh, easy to do. So sew those two seams, and then the outside of your bag will be boxed, and we're going to do the same thing with the black lining. You want to turn this inside out first as well so that we're having all of the seams on the inside of the shirt. So make sure you flip that inside out, trim off that hem, and then box the corners of the black as well. So now that I have both my orange outer bag and my black lining bag boxed at the bottom, I've got these this nice flat bottom, I'm going to leave the black bag wrong side out and tuck it inside the orange bag, which is right side out. So our wrong sides will be together. And I'm going to align the handles, the seams on the handles, because that's the place that I know they are the same, and put a couple pins in. Then I'll do the same thing on the second handle. Align those seams and pin. And you'll see how my cutting doesn't exactly line up. The black's a little wider, and that's just fine because of how it will curl. So after I get those handles pinned, I'm gonna kind of shake the bag to get it together. Then I can go down to other matching points, like the corners, and put in a pin here and a pin there. 
one or two across the middle and then on the sides of the handles as well. So you'll do the same thing, matching up the black and the orange and pinning along this edge. You can see I've got a little bit of the seam stuck here that I'm gonna cut off of this black section. But pin along what were the armholes, which are now the sides of the bag on both sides, and pin along the back side of the bag too. And once you have everything lined up and pinned, then you're going to stitch right where you've pinned all the way around the bag. Uh, use about a quarter inch seam allowance. You want to make sure that you're only sewing through the two layers you want to be. Make sure that you don't have like the other half of the handle or the back of the bag tucked in. So just pay attention to that as you stitch, but you're going to stitch around the whole top of the bag, up both handles, down the back, and then in what I was calling the uh, armhole holes left over from the t-shirt. Then your bag will be assembled and our last step will be stitching on our jack-o-lantern. All right, if you've got your lining and outer bag sewn together, then we're almost done with the whole process. It goes really quick when you start with a t-shirt instead of starting with fabric from scratch. What you can do at this point is look at your bag and see if there's any spots, like I've got one right here, where I just wanna trim it up a little cause it's just a little too crooked but for the most part those aren't going to matter unless it's a jagged edge that you just don't really want to show. Our last step before we throw this in the wash and then take it out for trick-or-treat is to stitch down our jack-o-lantern face just like we did the edges of the bag and what I like to do for this is to take a piece of cardboard and slide it into the bag and that way when I'm putting my pins in I know that I'm only pinning through the front layers. And I don't have to worry about pinning through to the back. So you want to pin around each of your shapes. Try to hold it as flat as you can. It will just make it easier as you go to stitch so your layers aren't moving apart from each other. Um, and this is definitely, the stitching is the trickiest part of the bag uh, because it is a lot of stopping and starting, changing directions, and it is the stretchy t-shirt material. But because you've got the wash away stabilizer in there, that helps to hold it, and the pins will help as well. So make sure you've got your lining flat uh, as you pin. You can keep checking that as you go along, and try to get pins around all sides of each of the shapes, and then go through with a quarter, about a quarter inch seam allowance, and stitch around all of your shapes. You want to backstitch at the beginning and the end so this stays nice and sturdy when you wash it. And after you finish doing those stitches, it'll be just about finished. So once you've finished stitching on your jack-o-lantern face, you can pop it in the wash and then the dryer. That will make your wash away stabilizer go away, any fabric marking pen lines, and it will create the little curled edge that you see around the outside of the bag and around your jack-o-lantern face. And your bag is all ready to be used, used and loved every year for Halloween instead of that plastic Target bag. Uh, before I go, I wanted to show you two other Halloween projects that I've done, and you can find the tutorials for these on my blog. This is a door or wall hanging that I made. It's using fussy cut owls and then a couple pieced rows. It goes together super quickly and easily and looks really cute on a fall door. And then I've got my Halloween wall hanging. This is done with fusible web to make the letters go together quickly. And it's also available as a tutorial on my blog if you're looking for more Halloween projects. So happy Halloween, happy trick or treating and may you get lots of great candy.